Hello everybody, how are you doing? My name is Anita Acharya and I'm so glad that you've come for the show. Today we're going to do landscape of the soul. Just give me a moment guys. Okay, so we're starting right from the beginning. A very, very warm welcome to all of you. Sorry for the few minutes delay that I had, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that everything was just perfect for you. And guys, a lot of you said landscape of the soul. You really want to teach that, ma'am? It's really tough. It's abstract. It's philosophical. And how will I manage it? That's just the reason why I should teach you that. And I also felt that in all my classes, I've been talking about soft skills and about uh, you know how how you can speak and how you can send mails emails i thought why not teach you how to understand a lesson well so today i'm going to do a lesson called landscape of the soul by and here is the name natalie troveroy guys please see the spelling properly n a t a l i e natalie troveroy t r o u v e r o y okay guys so let's crack it I'm educator Anita Acharya, and I'm so glad to have you here. I am the batch teacher for English core grade 11 and grade 12 CBSE. So if you are in grade 11, please note that my timings are Monday to Friday, 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. I'll be happy to see you then. Of course, we also have a lot of special classes on weekends sometimes. And also, I will also be like, giving you prior information about my YouTube classes. So do make sure you join in quickly. My classes are fun-filled, interactive, and my students are an amazing batch. You must join them. Okay? The, the batch of 2020. <laughs> That's what they like to call themselves. Okay? So let me tell you a little bit about the Unacademy Plus features. So guys, I, Anita Acharya, I'm very proud to share with you the Unacademy Plus features, and I'm so proud to be a part of this great family. So here you can see that you can work from your own home, and that's a wonder, isn't it? Because with the corona, you really have to stay safe, and it's nothing like working from home or studying from home also. And you can also see a digital board in your classes with a lot of colors. The infrastructure is amazing. And your trainers are expert trainers. They know how to handle the questions. They know how to handle the features. And most importantly, they know how to handle you so that you get a high score. Okay? And before I proceed further, I want to thank you all because uh, thanks to you, I have uh, reached a, a, a landmark of 50,000 uh, minutes of viewership. Okay? That's half a million. Not 50,000. Half a la uh, Five lakhs, sorry. Half a million viewership. So thank you so much. My maths is bad. Okay? English is good. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to thank you for the half a million viewership time that I had in terms of minutes. Thank you so much for the same. And of course, I'm going to work harder and harder to ensure that you like my videos. So all the classes that you have will be based on your syllabus and it is going to be from end to end. Also, value additions are given by your teachers. Every third session in my class is a question answer session and every fourth session is a doubt clearing session. Also, your homework is corrected, by the way. So make sure that you do your homework. You would have study material uh, after an hour after the session. You get a PDF format, and the entire class is there for you at your fingertips. Suppose say you have some issue, you could not take the class at that time. You can see it later. Suppose say you want to still make some notes on it. See it again. That is the advantage of having online classes. Uh, you would have your answer writing sessions, and then we have lots of polls. Those are fun things. Okay, guys? So those of you who have already attended my classes, and I can see some of you who have joined in. Thank you so much, class, for joining in. Welcome to the session. And uh, those of you who are new here, please note that you can use my referral code, Anita, A-N-I-T-A, 
for a two-year subscription and here are the uh, amount that has to be paid, very attractive discounts and you can see for two years, it's a very, very attractive discount. You just have to put the referral code ANITA and get a 10% discount on your Unacademy Plus subscription. Okay? Just before this, proceed to pay, you can just type this in. And if you have a class 12 subscription, then also you have some very, very attractive discounts. You can see it over here. Okay? Three months, six months, and one year. Here also you can see when it comes to one, it's on 50% off. And then you will again have a 10% off say That would again make it uh, a very attractive discount. Again, put your code here, ANITA, and proceed to pay. All right? So now that I've told you, make sure you take this opportunity to join us at an academy. I'll definitely be waiting to see you in my class. So guys, uh, when it comes to class 12, science and commerce, we take the complete syllabus. Here is your teacher here, in case you're wondering, where is this teacher? Here, here, here. <laughs> All right. So you can see that we will be taking your syllabus end to end, and we are following the NCRT syllabus. Again, if you are in commerce, also the same. Humanities has just been launched, where also I will be taking your classes. Okay. So these are some very attractive and very interesting courses that have come up. Now, let's come to Landscape of the Soul, written by Natalie Trevore, as I mentioned to you. So this lesson, I'm just giving an introduction now. This lesson is about the two art forms, the Chinese and the European. The chapter deals with the differences between the Chinese art form and the European art form. So those of you who just read the chapter in a hurry might be very confused. Which is Chinese? Which is European? So I thought, why not give an introduction? Then I'll create a summary and then I'll move on to the chapter. So whatever I can cover in this class, in this session, I'll definitely cover. Great idea? I'm glad you thought so. Okay. Welcome to the session. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you for joining in. Natalia uses two stories to show the contrast between the two. European art reproduces an actual view and presents it realistically. So European art, they always present a real view, whereas Chinese art does not create a real landscape. Then what does Chinese art do? Let me tell you. European art shows viewers exactly what is seen in the landscape. So they believe in having a completely realistic landscape. But Chinese art, Chinese art is a spiritual voice of the artist which creates an imaginative trail. Okay, so it's a spiritual voice. It takes you into a spiritual journey of the art. Whereas the European art shows you things exactly as they are in the form of painting. Okay, so if, you, if I were you, what I would do, you know, I would just make two columns like this in my rough notebook, Landscape of the Soul by Natalie Traveroy, and I would put European art. Okay, here yeah, let's put it as art. And then I would put Chinese art. So European is what? Real. Or I can say lifelike. And Chinese art form? It is imaginative. Spiritual. This is the basic difference. Okay, S P I R I T U A L. And spiritual is what part of speech? Can someone tell me? Yeah, that's right. It's an adjective. If I say spiritually, then it becomes adverb. This is an adjective. I couldn't help throwing this question. What to do? English teacher will always do these funny things, isn't it? Keep testing you in English all along. Let's look at the summary now. The author presents two contrasting forms of art. And who was the author? N-A-T-A-L-I-E-T-R-O-U-V-E-R-O-Y. So guys, those of you who have joined in just now, because I can see some of you have joined in now, please note that this is lesson four in Hornbell. Chinese art by using two different stories. 
So there is there's a there's a narrative and there are stories within that narrative. During the 8th century in China, the Tang Emperor Zhuan Zong commissioned a painter, Wu Daozi. Okay, what a name, huh? Wu Daozi. So let me write it down so that you remember clearly. W U D A O because they're Chinese, so they have different kind of names. And what's the emperor's name? This is the artist. Can you give me a second? I'll just drink some water, please. Just one second. Thank you. Right. So Wu Daozi is an artist and the emperor belonged to the Tang dynasty, T-A-N-G dynasty. And the Tang emperor's name, what was his name? Let's write it down so that there is no mistake about that. X. U A N Zuan Zong. This Zong is starts with Z. O N G. So Tang Emperor X U A N Z O N G. Do write capital letters, okay, guys? Because it's a proper noun. Capital uh, letter has to be used. Wu Daozi is the artist. So he commissioned. Commission means he enrolled him or he gave him some kind of a, a stipend to do a painting that would adorn a wall in the palace. Adorn means decorate a wall in the palace. The emperor observed the outer appearance of the painting done by the painter. However, the painter drew his attention to a cave at the bottom of the mountain. The artist told the king that he would take him inside the cave in the painting. Upon the artist entering the cave, the entry point closed behind him. Can you imagine? So the artist enters the cave and the entry point closes behind him. To the amazement, amazement is surprise. Amazement is a noun. To the, um, to the amazement of the emperor, as soon as the painter clapped his hand, the painting on the wall was gone. And so was the artist. Isn't that strange? Imagine a landscape. And the emperor saying, yes, it's now or something. And the painter shows him a cave at the, at the, at the bottom of the, of the painting. So there's a cave at the bottom of the mountain in, the, on, in that painting. And he enters the cave. Then he claps his hand. The entry point closes. And then finally, as, uh, to the, the painter clapped his hand and the painting on the wall was gone. And even the artist disappeared from sight. Strange. In another tale, tale means story. Can you think of a better word instead of story? Legend, L-E-G-E-N-D. An artist refused to draw an eye of a dragon as he was terrified that the dragon would fly out of the painting. So it would, like, he felt that he would, when he painted, the spirit of the dragon would enter and the dragon would fly out of the painting. This is all Chinese, huh? But over here, let's look at European art form. In yet another legend, to represent a European art form, so now we come to European art form, a blacksmith. A blacksmith is a guy who works with metal, okay? Falls in love with a daughter of an artist. The father didn't approve of him because of his profession. The blacksmith quietly sneaked into his art. So sneaked means stealthily got into Sneaked in, that means moved in quietly, moved, moved in stealthily. The word stealthily can also show sneaked. Into his art studio and painted a fly on the artist's latest panel. So you can imagine that the paintings, if it is, let's imagine they are like panels, okay, like this. So let's imagine that he's finished painting something here, he painted something here. And in this one, which is not start painting, he painted a fly. Please don't go by my drawing because I'm not the artist, okay? I'm a teacher. <laughs> okay, if you're wondering, what is this? Is this a fly? It looks more like a bird. Well, we will ignore that. So fly on the artist's latest panel. The fly seems so lifelike that the artist tried to hit it first. So that master art artist thought, what is this? There's a fly here. And he tried to get rid of it. Before the realization dawned on him 
that it was in the painting. This was not a real fly. It was just a painting. Not a real fly. Whoa. Okay. It will be an exclamation mark. It was a painting. Now you will be wonder why am I writing this down? So that you can remember better. Okay. There was a happy ending to the story. What's the happy ending? The painter accepted the blacksmith as a trainee in his art studio. So finally he realized that this man had a lot of talent. So he put him as a trainee in his art studio and he later married the painter's daughter, okay, whom he was in love with in any case. And he went on. The, the happiness does not end here. There's further happiness in store. He went on to become to become a prominent artist of that period. So he was a, a prominent or a famous, he went on to become a famous artist of that period. So he got fame and he also got uh, accepted by the painter and he got to also marry the girl he loved. Isn't that beautiful? These stories revealed, revealed means showed us, showed as to how art form is believed to be followed in two different regions in the world, the Oriental world and the Occidental world. What is the meaning of Occidental world? The, the world if, like in Europe. Occidental is Europe. And when you say Oriental, we are talking about the Far East. So each of them have got their own art forms. In China, the painter does not paint a real one. He does not paint a real painting. He uses his spiritual voice to create a piece of imagination, an abstract piece. He's, that means he literally makes landscapes from his soul. The viewer could enter the painting from any part of it according to his own imagination. He could travel anywhere and create a path of his own. So it's as if you can, when you see a painting, you get so caught with it, you feel as if you can enter the painting from some, in some path, climb up some mountain, maybe go down, maybe enjoy yourself near a waterfall. That's the beauty of the Chinese painting. The artist thus invited the viewer to enter his mind. Who is the his here? The painter's mind. Through his paintings. This concept was named Shan Shui meaning mountain water, okay? Shan Shui means mountain water. Keep holding, hold on to that. We'll come to that a little later, okay? Here we're talking basically about the yin and yang elements, the masculine and the feminine aspects. My class whom I taught just now, 3.30, 4.30, I think this is ringing some bell in your memory. Okay, great. Now we come directly to the lesson. And here we start this beautiful, beautiful story. Shall we? All right. A wonderful old tale is told about the painter Wu Daozi who lived in the 8th century. Notice the spelling. His last painting was a landscape commissioned by the Tang Emperor Zhuan Song. I hope it has, my summary has made life easier because now this seems familiar. To decorate a palace wall. The master had hidden his work behind a screen. So my dear, a screen would be like a curtain. So only the emperor would see it. For a long while, the emperor admired the wonderful scene. Welcome. Thank you for joining in. For a long while, the emperor admired the wonderful scene, discovering forests, high mountains, waterfalls, Clouds floating in an immense sky, men on hilly paths, birds in flight. Look at all these beautiful things. Let me underline this list. Discovering forests, high mountains, waterfalls, clouds floating in an immense sky. Immense over here means saying it seems like an endless sky. Immense, large sky, men on hilly paths, birds in flight. Look, sire. Sire means sir. Okay, the word sire means sir. It's a mark of respect. Said the painter, in this cave at the foot of the mountains, 
dwells a spirit. Dwells means lives. Lives a spirit. The painter clapped his hands and the entrance to the cave opened. I'm sure you, some of you are remembering that Alibaba and 40 Thieves, right? <laughs> and he clapped his hands and he said, Kulja, Sim Sim, and the, and the door opened, right? So it's something like that? Yes. The inside is splendid beyond anything words can convey. This is what the painter is telling the emperor. Please let me show your majesty the way. The painter entered the cave. But the entrance closed behind him. And before the astonished, astonished means stunned. I'm putting it here. S-T-U-N-N-E-D. Before the astonished emperor could move or utter a word, the painting had vanished from the wall. Wow! Not a trace of Wu Daozi's brush was left. And the artist was never seen again in this world. What a strange mystical abstract story that is i use a word mystical shall i put it here for you it's a new word m y s t i c a l mystical means abstract shall we go to the next slide then here i put some words for you dwells lives splendid wonderful astonished surprised such stories played an important part in china's classical education the books of Confucius and Zhuangzi, the philosophers and writers, Confucius, very famous philosopher, and Zhuangzi, are full of them. They help the master to guide his disciple. Disciple means follower. You can also say student. To guide his disciple in the right direction. Beyond the anecdote, what's in your anecdote? Incidentally, I can, I can pronounce a direction or direction. Both are correct. You can say education or education and they both are right. Okay. Anecdote means a personal account. A personal account. So how do I pronounce it? Anecdote. Anecdote. A personal account. So beyond the anecdote, they are deeply revealing of the spirit in which art was considered. Contrast this story. Or another famous one about a painter who wouldn't draw the eye of a dragon he had painted for fear it would fly out of the painting with an old story from a native Flanders that I find most representative of Western painting. So Flanders is, uh, is in Europe and he says compare this to another story which I'm going to discuss a little later. Here we talk about this story which was discussed about this painting, this cave and how the painter goes in and he claps his hand and disappears. And the other one where another famous painter says that he doesn't want to draw the eye of a dragon because he felt if he drew it, the, the dragon might just fly out of the painting. So that's how the Chinese look at the paintings. They view it from the soul, from the heart, but not in the Occidental world. Over here, please notice. A follower, a pupil, a student. Anecdote, a brief and interesting story of a person. I mentioned the word Flanders. And I put capital F because it's the name of a particular place. A medieval nation. Medieval is like an, like an ancient nation in Western Europe during the medieval times. In Western Europe. So here's the, that interesting story that we're going to talk about. In 15th century Antwerp, Antwerp is a place again in Europe, a master blacksmith called Quintin Metzies. We'll write it out here so that we are absolutely sure of the spelling later. Q-U-I-N-T-E-N, -E Quintin. Metzies, because these are not very normal names, right? We don't normally use them, that's why. M-E-T-S-Y-S, Quintin Metzies, fell in love with a painter's daughter. The father would not accept a son-in-law in such a profession. So the father said, I don't want to accept a son-in-law who is just a master blacksmith because you are, I'm a famous painter. So how can I accept that my daughter should marry a blacksmith or a person who works with metal? 
So Quintin sneaked into the painter's studio, the master blacksmith. Remember, this is the main character in the story, Quintin uh, Metzies. I'll put it over here, blacksmith. who was in love with the painter's daughter, okay. So Quintin sneaked into the painter's studio, that is the art studio, okay. Studio refers to the art studio. So guys, this is exactly the way I teach in my class. If you found this interesting, then you really should join me. But anyways, you stay there because I am going to make sure that you understand this chapter really well and any question that you get on it well, you can crack it easily. Sneaked into the painter's studio, and painted a fly on his latest panel with such delicate realism. Realism means it was so lifelike that the master, master here refers to who? The painter. The father of the girl whom Quintin Metzies had fallen in love with. He tried to swat it away. What is swat it away? Hit it. Hit it with something. Before he realized what had happened, Quintin was immediately admitted as an apprentice, apprentice is like a trainee, into his studio. He married his beloved and went on to become one of the most famous painters of his age. These two stories illustrate what each form of art is trying to achieve, a perfect illusionistic likeness in Europe, the essence of inner life and spirit in Asia. So here again, if I were you, Europe, Asia. So Asia refers to the oriental part or the Chinese kind of painting and Europe refers to the, the European art. So over here, perfect illusionistic, perfect illusion, you can write it that way, lifelike. And what is Asian or Asia? It had, the paintings have the essence of inner life and spirit. There, we've got it all down. So now we go to the next one. Before that, let's have a look at the word meanings. As I mentioned, the place Antwerp, I said it's in Europe. So you can see it's a city in northern Belgium. Belgium is also famous for something else, you know, glass. They make beautiful glassware. Delicate realism, the quality of art, and of course, Belgium chocolates. But let me not talk about that. <laughs> yeah, Belgian chocolates are famous the world over. Delicate realism, the quality of art, which makes it lifelike. Swat, crush something. Apprentice, trainee. Illusionistic likeness, an illusion which is created that resembles something, okay? In the Chinese story, welcome, sorry, I didn't see you, welcome. In the Chinese story, the emperor commissions a painting and appreciates its outer appearance. But the artist reveals to him the true meaning of his work. The emperor may rule over the territory he has conquered, but only the artist knows the way within. So the emperor rules over his kingdom, right? Territory being his kingdom. But the artist knows the way within. So he knows the way within the kingdom. He knows the soul of the, of the kingdom. He knows the way within. Let me show the way, the Tao, a word that means both the path or the method. So here we have a new word Tao and Tao has two meanings. One is path and the other is method. And the mysterious works of the universe. Okay, path, method, or let me put this together otherwise. Path or method. 
and maybe I can put this instead of putting a third column, let me put this down as mysterious works of the universe. Because if I make a third arrow, it will go into my text. All right? A word that means both the path or the method and the mysterious works of the universe. So this is one path or the method and this is the second one. The painting is gone, but the artist has reached his goal beyond any material appearance. The artist has gone into the soul of the painting, beyond the outer look, beyond the outer appearance. A classical Chinese landscape is not meant to reproduce, welcome, welcome to the class. A classical Chinese landscape is not meant to reproduce an actual view as would a western figurative painting. So a classical Chinese landscape, it doesn't, it doesn't it reproduce things exactly as they are. It doesn't believe in making a perfect replica. Replica means a perfect duplicate of something that is there in the world. They don't do that as would a western figurative painting. So how would, the, so Chinese they don't do this, but the western what do they do? Whereas the European painter wants you to borrow his eyes and look at a particular landscape exactly as he saw it from a specific angle. The Chinese painter does not choose a single viewpoint the Chinese painter doesn't choose single viewpoint. His landscape is not a real one. And you can enter it from any point. Then travel in it. So if there is a painting, let's imagine, okay? As I mentioned to you earlier, I'm not an artist, guys, but even then. So let's imagine there are some mountains here, okay? And there is a waterfall. There are also maybe a river. So if it is a Chinese painting, you would perhaps be able to, when you see the painting, you can feel as if you can walk along this path. Perhaps you can go along with the waterfall. Maybe you can swim along this river. That's the beauty of a Chinese painting. Okay? The Chinese painter does not choose a single viewpoint. So you can move from anywhere. You can move from anything else. You can see things from the top. And you can view things below, how it looks below. And then you can, from here, you can go down to the water. And you can move along, imagine that you're moving along with the water. Yes, that's the beauty of Chinese painting. His landscape is not a real one. And you can enter it from any point. Then travel in it. The artist creates a path for your eyes to travel up and down. Then back again in a leisurely movement. Leisurely means relaxed. In a relaxed movement. Okay. What's the difference between Chinese art and European art? So if European art is also there, you would just see the beauty of the art, but somehow it doesn't allow you to look, it doesn't, you just see it as it is. See it as it is in nature. But you somehow don't feel like exploring the painting and going from any direction like how you do for the Chinese painting. They believe in creating a duplicate or a perfect likeness. Okay? A duplicate or to replicate. I can use, if I want to use another word for duplicate, replica is a noun. But if I want to say duplicate or replicate, the replicate nature. They just want to make it look perfect. But they do not enter the soul of the painting like a Chinese painting does. This is even more true in the case of the horizontal scroll. Horizontal scroll, so there is a painting which is like more, uh, uh, like, like the width is, uh, is more than the length. And over here is like a scroll, it's folded. So when you open it, 
the painting kind of kind of reveals itself in which okay scroll is a folded rolled up sheet of paper in this case a painting this is even more true in the case of the horizontal scroll in which the action of slowly opening <laughs> all right thank you welcome of slowly opening one section of the painting then rolling it up to move on the other so you can roll this painting from this side or you can even roll the painting from the other side rolling it up to move on to the other adds a dimension of time which is unknown in any other form of painting so it would seem as if the painting is becoming older when you move from here to here or there's a time frame which has changed when you move from here to here is not that amazing this is what this is the horizontal scroll this i was explaining to you the horizontal scroll where when you roll it up then rolling it up to move on to the other adds a dimension of time so it adds a can i write it down over here adds a dimension of which is unknown in any other form of painting so that means it is unique unknown means it's unique okay it is absolutely original because no other form of painting has this dimension of time why because when you roll it up from this end so when you start folding it up and you roll it up from this end there is a passage of time which shows and when you roll it up from this end again you can see a passage of time or a span of time this is one thing this is one angle which is very interesting it also requires the active participation of the viewer who decides at what pace he will travel through the painting a participation which is physical as well as mental so here the participation of the viewer is important in terms of physical and mental participation so one of my students had written this down in the class today about participation physical and mental and i was telling her but beyond this there is more like a spiritual painting spiritual participation so let me put that on top physical and mental how because when you're moving from here it's as if you're walking along a path and if the time is also changing by the time you reach this for example and it's also a mental dimension because it's an intellectual exercise your your mind is also being exercised as to how the painting is changing and how time is evolving and how you are moving along did you understand this part physical and mental and why is it spiritual that i'll explain to you just now the chinese painter does not want you to borrow his eyes unlike the european who just does things exactly as he sees in the universe the chinese painter is not interested in only you seeing with your eyes he wants you to enter his mind so it's like a mind game so he wants you to be there spiritually also amazing right so participation of the viewer is in on three levels physical because you're actually moving along the path you're walking along a certain trail of the landscape and going to different areas mental because you feel you are also in, using your intellect to appreciate the beauty you are you are using your mind to also understand the time of the day you are also uh, seeing the 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 you are you're also seeing the kind of uh, efforts that need to be done you're looking at the surroundings and you have to move according to the surroundings for example if you are walking along a very narrow mountain path in your mind's eye so you will have to be very careful and walk so it might be a mental strain as well right it's also a spiritual strain or a spiritual participation i won't say strain a spiritual participation because you are entering into the mind of the painter and you're trying to understand the painting the painting soul but what happens in the european painting what happens in the european painting so participation of the viewer is physical mental spiritual for the 
Chinese paintings, for example. But do I require all this for the European painting? No. For the European painting, I will require only the physical participation. Through the eyes, you just see the painting and you appreciate the beauty of the painting. That's it. Did you see the difference between the two? How the Chinese uh, paintings uh, involve physical, mental and spiritual aspects, but the European painting takes in only the, uh, the eyes, what the, the visual inputs. They say no, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. But they put it just like that. It's just the eyes which takes inputs, some sensory stimuli from the environment and appreciates it. But the Chinese painter is not happy with that. The Chinese painter wants the viewer to do a lot more than that. You have to physically strain yourself. You have to physically put in the effort to move along the painting, to see the various angles from the cave to the mountains, to the hills, to the valleys, wherever. You can go in any direction. And it's also a mental, uh, mental uh, exercise because you're using your intellect to understand the environment around you as you move. It also has to be spiritual because you then understand the mind of the painter. Awesome, right? So therefore, the landscape is an inner one. Inner one, it is brought out from the soul. It is a spiritual and conceptual space. So it is something which is spiritual, it's something which is abstract. I can also say it is something which is philosophical. Philosophical spelling, guys. P-H-I-L-O S-O, philosophical, P-H-I-C-A-L. Now, why am I insisting on spelling? Because I do it in the class also. <laughs> because I'll be correcting your work and that's why. This much is clear? Okay, so I'll go to the next slide then. Before that, a quick look at the word meanings. Figurative painting is a metaphorical representation of a painting. Figurative means something which is like a symbolic kind of a painting, symbolic. Leisurely, unhurried. So you can walk leisurely around these paintings. Conceptual space, that is a relation with abstract representation. It's not just the painting exactly as it is, but it's an abstract representation of the same. Thank you so much for joining in. I hope you're finding this interesting. Okay, you want to look at the previous slide, you can see this. Alright, the Chinese paintings, participation on three levels and the European is only on the physical level. The horizontal scroll which can be rolled from this side and from the other side and it adds a dimension of time, that's a dimension of time and also the participation of the viewer. And the landscape is an inner one, a spiritual and conceptual space, okay. Right. This concept is expressed as Shan Shui. Now you might remember, oh, I said this at the beginning of the session, didn't I? Of course I did. So let me put this down. S-H-A-N-S-H-U-I. This concept is expressed as Shan Shui. Literally, mountain water, which used together represent the word landscape. Okay, more than two elements of an image, these represent two complementary poles reflecting the Taoist view of the universe. So, two complementary poles, look at the spelling of the word complementary, guys C O M P L E M E N T A R Y. Complementary is something which is matching. Do not confuse this with the other spelling. C-O-M-P-L-I-M-E-N-T. Compliment is when you say something good to someone. Let's say your friend is wearing a nice uh, outfit. You'll say, hey, nice dress. That's a compliment. C-O-M-P-L-I-M-E-N-T. But let us say she's wearing a beautiful color combination. And you say, hey, these colors, your, your, your jeans and your, your shirt, they complement each other really well. So compliment over here will be C-O-M-P-L-E-M-E-N-T. Will you remember that? That means they match each other very well. C-O-M-P-L-I-M-E-N-T, word of praise. Compliment to match, complementary. 
complement also we can use but here we need the word complementary because we need an adjective to describe the poles they represent two complementary poles reflecting the Taoist view of the universe as you remember the, the person that painter whose name was Tao right the mountain so now I'll have to draw a mountain okay now I'll pardon my drawing okay? please don't laugh okay this is a mountain I have to tell this is a mountain <laughs> what a terrible situation huh so the mountain is yang y-a-n-g and it reaches vertically towards heaven what are the qualities of yang it is stable warm and dry in the sun let's put it down so the qualities of yang are stable stable means it doesn't fluctuate it remains constant stable means constant if you wish I can put it over here constant warm warm and dry so it seems to take in the energy of the sun because it's reaching up towards the heaven okay and then we have something else called yin y i n and yin is something which is horizontal okay resting on the earth so it rests on the earth unlike yang which, which, which reaches up to the sky this rests on the earth what are the features of yin so let me write it over here since there's no space over there thanks to my drawing yin is fluid so it's not stable it's fluid it's water right so it moves moist that means wet and cool so can you see the totally two different sides of the spectrum? Yang stable, yin fluid. Yang warm, yin moist. Dry, cool. So all this together creates paintings which takes in the interaction of yin, the receptive feminine aspect of universal energy. Okay, so guys, when you talk of universal energy, we are talking in terms of yin and yang. Yin plus yang. Right? And its counterpart. And its counterpart. Yang. Active and masculine. So over here, let me put it down over here otherwise. Yin is feminine aspect. Yang is the masculine aspect. Aspect of what? Universal energy. Universal energy comprises. So, guys, when I say comprises, it's a, you should say which comprises the two aspects. But if I say consists, you should say which consists of. Please don't say comprises of. It's wrong English. Will you please make a note of that in a notebook? Comprises and then the word. But when you say consists, you must say consists of. Okay, otherwise it will become a wrong idiomatic usage. So universal energy is a combination of yin plus yang. All right. This is of course a fundamental notion of Taoism, and this whole thing comes under the concept of D A O I S M Taoism. Now you might be wondering what is this whole Taoism? As I told, Tao is the painter who gave this idea. The oriental painter and ism the word ism means philosophy so the philosophy that Tao used or the philosophy that Tao believed in is called Taoism 
Haven't I made this easy to understand now? Yang goes up towards the heavens, stable, warm and dry, masculine aspect. Yin is close to the earth, it rests on the earth, it's fluid, it's moist and it's cool. Yin is the feminine aspect, Yang is the masculine aspect. As Tao, the painter, gave this philosophy, it's called Taoism. Tao plus ism. So Taoism refers to, and now we look at the right side of the screen, universal energy which comprises yin and yang. Finished. So easy that was, wasn't it? But hang in there. There's one more very interesting aspect to this. I feel the most interesting aspect of all. What is often overlooked is an essential third element, the middle void, where the interaction takes place. So you have, let us imagine that here is the yin, the feminine aspect, and here, let's imagine, is the masculine aspect known as, yes, yang. Now, there is a third element here. The third element is in the middle, called the middle void, where the interaction, so, so, so this one brings its energy here, and this one brings its energy here, where it starts working on each other. So the interaction takes place in the middle void. This can be compared Look at this beauty, when you say compared with the yogic practice of pranayama, pranayama is what we do in India, right? Yoga. So over here, can be compared, so we can say this is an analogy. The literary device used here is analogy. A-N-A-L-O-G-Y. This can be compared because a comparison is made with another form of uh, discipline. With the yogic practice of pranayama, Breathe in, retain, that is hold your breath. Retain, or retain means to hold. In this case, the breath. Hold the breath. So it is of three types. One is breathe in. After that, you retain. Then after that, you breathe out. Correct? This area where you retain the breath or you hold the breath, is something similar to the void. The suspension of breath is the void where meditation occurs. When there is the breath is suspended, meditation happens. The middle void is essential. Why is it essential? Because it requires you to make sure that the yin and the yang interacts. This is the part where your spiritual participation, your physical and mental participation is required. And then only can you appreciate the concept of Taoism, which is to do with universal energy. So when they say the middle void is essential, nothing can happen without it. Why can nothing happen without it? Because you, the viewer, are important and your participation is important. It is you who has to understand the dimension of time. It is you who has to physically, mentally and spiritually participate. So if you are not there, the painting ceases to be interesting. So you have to be there. Nothing can happen without it. You in a state of high meditation. Not just looking at it as a painting, but in a state of high meditation. Hence, the importance of the white, unpainted space in Chinese landscape. White, unpainted space that is the middle void. So you'll see in Chinese paintings, there are some areas which are white and unpainted, which is meant for you to fill up with your imagination. Isn't that amazing? That you being a viewer are also in some way a painter. Because you paint the canvas, the, the white areas of the canvas with colors from your own imagination. And it is you who physically, mentally and spiritually participate in the painting. I think it's a great thing to to be talking about, okay? Taoism, a Chinese philosopher based on writings of Lao Tzu. Void, 
vacant or empty. You can make a note of this vacant or empty. This is also where man finds a fundamental role. I hope the last slide was clear. So if you were, were in my class, what would happen is I would be asking when I before I move the slide, is this clear to you? If not, I'll go back to the slide and explain to you. And then I would explain again, or everyone says, no, it's fine. They put a thumbs up or something like that. They give me an icon or a clap or something. I would know it's done and I move to the next slide. Okay? Just letting in giving you a, a simulation or a kind of a, a little rehearsal of how a class is when I take it. Okay? This is also because all these years I thought you should also know how I teach in class and that's why I did this, uh, did this exercise. Uh, of course, some of you might, might have also seen uh, in grade 12, if you are in grade 12, if you know somebody in grade 12, do ask them uh, to also see some other very interesting uh, uh, special classes that I've done. Uh, the Rat Trap, okay? Yes, by Selma Lagerlof. So that would also be interesting. This is also where man finds a fundamental role. But even special classes uh, are open to other students also. But if you are a plus class, if you are a plus subscriber, as we mentioned earlier, then you get all the advantages of a plus two, that a plus student gets, which I mentioned in the beginning. This is also where man finds a fundamental role. In that space between heaven and earth, he becomes the conduit. What's a conduit? Conduit is like a channel. The conduit of communication between both poles of the universe. His presence is essential. His presence is essential, even if it's only suggested. Far from being lost or oppressed by the lofty peaks, oppressed means dominated. Lofty, huge, grand, massive, grand or massive mountain peaks. He is in Francois Cheng's wonderful expression, the eye of the landscape. So here, when you talked about the middle void and other things, you find that man finds a fundamental role in Chinese art. In that space between heaven and earth, I remember I told you about the middle void where he has to be in a high set of meditation. He becomes a conduit of communication between both poles of the universe. Which both poles tell me? The masculine aspect, the yang, and the feminine aspect, yin. His presence is essential, even if it's only suggested. Far from being lost or oppressed by the lofty peaks, he is, in Francois, and you pronounce it that way, guys, Francois Cheng's wonderful expression, the eye of the landscape. Look at the word meanings. Conduit is channeled, oppressed is burdened, Lofty means tall. Okay, guys. So uh, this is how I take a class. And if you have any questions, do put it down. And I look forward to seeing you in my Unacademy classes. And uh, please remember the timings, though. It is, uh, it is 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. I'm Anita Acharya. And do use code ANITA to get a 10% discount. In case you missed the previous slides, please go through them in the beginning, which gives you an idea of how to become a plus subscriber. Thank you for watching this session, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I enjoyed training you. Landscape of the Soul by Natalie Trevoroy. Taught very happily by Anita Acharya to all of you. This special session was meant just for you. Take good care of yourselves. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Hang in for my next YouTube, which will also come in shortly. Bye-bye. Let's crack it. Thank you so much.